Hi felters and crafters and welcome. In this video I'm going to talk about my experience of selling on Etsy and give you some hints and tips and ideas if you decide to do it and at the end I'll say whether I think it's worth it. I have been selling for five years on Etsy. I started out selling jewellery, I then started needle felting and I absolutely loved it. Now I sell my needle felted items. This is my sales for the past year. So from October to October I've sold just under £2,000. So I sell on Etsy part time, which suits me perfectly because I can't needle felt the items or create the items fast enough. Why would you sell on Etsy? If you have no customer base, no following and you want to work part time and you're happy with it being a slow burner, that means it's going to start slowly and build up. The more you sell on Etsy, the more you're likely to sell. Uh, I could set up my own website, absolutely, but how am I going to get people to my website? I'm certainly not going to rank in Google, that's for sure. So Etsy have 17 million visitors per month, which is amazing. And the thought of some of those 17 million going past my shop front in Etsy is amazing. And that is why one of the reasons why I do like Etsy. It's very easy to set up. I was thinking of doing a setup video, but there are some fantastic YouTube videos out there. Go and watch one of them and they will literally lead you through the whole setup. It is not too difficult. It is going to take you maybe one to two days to get your items on there and to get your photos and to get it all sorted. So put aside a little bit of time for setting it up. Once it's set up, it's a lot easier to run. I think when you first start, you're going to need between five and ten items to make your shop look good. Other things that you're going to need is you're going to need email, your shop name. It would be great if you had a logo and the logo doesn't even have to be a picture. It could just be the title of your shop and try and pick the colours or the branding of your shop and how you want it to look because this will make it look more professional. Canva is a free website which helps you design things and it helps you sort out the banner. That's the shop uh, front at the top. So go and have a look on Canva as well. A couple of other things that are really important are you must have good photos. It doesn't mean you have to have an expensive camera. I do all the pictures of my um, needle felted items on my phone. You just need good lighting, good background, Take as many pictures as you can. You are allowed to put 10 on. So I do suggest putting all 10 on. And I like to have a quite a consistent background. So I do most of them on my dining room table. You could do them outside. You could have props with them. I think it's nice that when someone goes into your shop, it will look quite consistent instead of it looking extremely different from each picture. The other thing you're going to need is a good description. You don't walk into a shop and look at an item that's handmade and someone just say to you or the shop seller say to you oh would you buy this please you will expect to be told an awful lot more about that item such as it's handmade it's made from wool the wool is locally sourced all sorts of things like that and this is where you don't need too much but you do need some extra and we'll go through a description in in a minute um Pricing, you've got to work out your pricing. Do you know what I do? And I think it's a really good idea is to check out the competition. There's loads of other sellers. There's 2.5 million sellers on Etsy. So go and have a look. And the good ones to note are if an item has underneath it written in two people's baskets, in three people's baskets, you know that those items are probably selling well and they've priced it right. They've done good photos, good description. So have a look at those items. Um, like I said, I do a video on pricing my your craft items, so I'll link that at the end. The other thing to note is you go in, you open up your shop with 10 items and that's fantastic. But if I was a visitor and I went into that shop and it had no sales and no reviews, it's quite a leap of faith for me to actually buy something in that shop. So in order to overcome this, and I really thoroughly recommend it, it's not cheating or anything like that, is you get five friends and family to buy an item from your shop. So it doesn't have to be an expensive item. And at the end of the day, they could purchase it through Etsy and you could pay them back if you want to do that. Um, but it will show as a sale and you also get them to do a review. When they go in and do um, a sale or make a sale, Etsy like it if a buyer goes into a shop straight to the item 
puts the item straight to the basket and purchases it because it looks like it was a very good sale. So don't let them go into your shop, look around, come out, go back in. Say to them, if you say, could you just go straight in, put it in the basket and make the sale and then you can have a look around afterwards. Um, but that is a really good way. It, it, like I said, the more you sell, the more you will sell, because if people see that you've had um, 50 sales and you've got 25 reviews, they're more likely to buy from you. Sort out your packaging before you put an item on there, because if somebody does purchase something, which is fantastic, you don't have to worry because you've got the boxes ready, you've got the packaging ready, um, you might have a little business card you want to pop in. I print out the invoice and just write a little note on that and pop that in the box. Um, tags section, when you're doing your description, and I'll show you the tag section in a minute, there are 13 tags that you can put on and this is a bit like the SEO or the search engine optimization. This is how someone is going to find your item. If I was looking for a needle felted cow, I would type in needle felted cow and that is how it would come up. So in the tags, if you type in needle felted sheep, needle felted cow, needle felted horse, those are the kind of search titles that are going to get your item to appear. So the tags are important and do do all 13. So here we are. This is Hugo the Highland Cow. There's the title at the top. Um, and then we've got eight pictures. Should have ten. That's naughty. But there's eight pictures, all quite consistent. The thumbnail is the main picture that's going to show up. So make sure that's good. You can put a little video on. Then there's the title again and a couple of other bits and bobs about who made it. It was me. And then I can drop down and ignore those. It's more for jewellery and stuff like that to the description. So I've gone through the description quite a bit saying uh, what he is, saying he's a bit special, saying what he's made of and just a few other little bits and that he's not for children as well. So that's really important. And then we'll go further down the page. These are the tags. So I've put needle felting. I've put Scottish animal, Highland cow, needle felted cow, and then we go down. So that's all the 13 tags and there's the price. Right, uh, costs, how much does it cost? And this is where Etsy is fantastic. Open up your shop. It costs nothing to open up your shop, but I don't think you're allowed to open a shop without making a listing. So it will cost you a small amount. To list one item on Etsy for four months costs 20 cents or about 12p UK money. That is absolutely nothing. That is such a good price for listing an item. If you listed 10 items for one year, that would be four pounds. Where else are you going to be able to list something or 10 things for four pounds for a year and get the amount of traffic past it that you would get on Etsy? So this is why I think you're really not risking anything by setting up an Etsy shop. Um, if you sell an item, then you pay commission. Now, the commission ranges between, if you, you can read it all, there's a 5% and a 5%. There's a 2.5% on um, currency. So if it sells in a foreign country, then there's a 2.5% currency conversion. But basically, you, you pay between 10 and 12% commission on most items. Um, we will have a little look through an example now of actual items I've sold. And then I will also show you the how much I sold for the year and how much I cost it cost me. And there's a slight difference in that. I don't quite know why, but we'll go through those now. So here we are. You can see I sold that grey cow for £49.50. There's four charges that Etsy charged me. And when you work it out, the percentage is 11.5%, I think, on that one. And then let's look at another example further down. I sold this little valet for £35. And then there was one, two, three, four little charges there. And that came to 11.8% commission. So if we have a look in the green, that's how much I sold for the whole year. And then the one on the other side is my costs. And that came to 9.8%. So there you go. It can appear confusing because there's several lists, several um, costs that go on there. But basically, I don't think you pay anything more than 12%. Um, so that's why I do think it is 
quite good. If you were to sell on eBay, you'd pay 10%. But anyway, I'll talk about that in a minute. Shipping. Um, you can add your shipping on as an extra or you can include it in the price. Now, Etsy changed, I think it was about a year ago, where they said that if you include shipping in your price and show it as free shipping underneath um, an item, because you'll see if you search items, some will say free shipping, they will put you higher up the search rankings. And it is true because as soon as I did that, I had a lot more visitors to my shop. It is going to be down to you whether you want to do that. You can open a shop and just sell in, if you live in the UK, just sell in the UK. If you live in America, just sell in America. So you can keep things nice and simple. I do sell worldwide and I have posted stuff worldwide. And it really, I, I think the 50% of my sales are in America and I'm in the UK. So for me, it really works to sell everywhere. But I do include shipping into the actual item of my price, the price of my item. <laughs> and put free shipping and I do get further up the search rankings. So Etsy statistics are fantastic. They tell you an awful lot about your shop. They tell you how many uh, people have visited your shop, how many people have bought, obviously, because you'll see the number of sales, but it's called your conversion rate. So that's really interesting to see. They will also show you um, if you have an item, they will show you how many times people have viewed that item and especially if they haven't bought it, why haven't they bought it is something you could look at. Maybe the price is too high. Maybe the pictures aren't good enough. So you can see your um, most popular viewed item because obviously you'll know if you're selling items, whether they're popular. But knowing that how many people are looking at something is really good as well. It will also show you where your um, shoppers are coming from. And in the beginning, 98 percent of my um, viewers came from Etsy. So it shows Etsy was working really well. Um, Etsy likes activity. They like you a bit like YouTube, like you to post videos. Etsy like you to be um, putting on listings. So if you start with five listings and then gradually every couple of days, put another one on another one on. It shows that you as a seller are turning up to your shop and you are active and you are selling stuff and they like that. And if they like that, they might push you further up the search engine. Sales are the ultimate to push you up. But that is another way of proving to Etsy that you are active. The maximum you're going to pay commission wise is between 10 and 12 percent. So you could try and sell in a shop over here in the UK. I know it's at least 20 to 30 percent commission. If you sell in a gallery, it's 30 percent. If you sell on eBay, you're paying 10 percent anyway. There's another really well known um, place that you can sell handmade items in the UK. It costs you 200 pounds just to join. And then they take a good, I think it's 30 percent again. So. Etsy has a real sort of handmade feel to it. If you've never purchased on Etsy, go and purchase something first before you open a shop and have a look around and see what you think and and see what the experience is like for you. Another thing to mention is um, how Etsy pays you. It pays straight into your bank account. And obviously they take care of all the sales when somebody uh, purchases something. So that's really fantastic. You don't have to worry about that. If um, you want to be you can decide how you want to be paid from Etsy. I think the normal setting might be set to a month, but you can be paid daily, weekly, every two weeks, every month. So go in and change the setting if you want to change the setting on it. The best noise you want to be hearing on Etsy is this noise, because that means that someone has purchased one of your items and it is so fantastic. Even if it wakes you up in the middle of the night, I don't care. It's lovely to know that someone has bought one of my items. So you want lots of this to make you really happy. And also it's lovely, really lovely when you get a nice review back from somebody that they've taken the time to write how wonderful your item is. So do I recommend selling on Etsy? Yes, I do. Um, it's really worked for me for the past five years as a part time income and it's easy to set up. It doesn't cost much. And it's fair that you pay a little bit of commission to Etsy. So I hope I've answered some of your questions. If you have any others, put them in the comments below. And I've got lots more videos to come. Do subscribe. I'm doing a couple more business uh, videos, but hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching.